Today in Wildwood Zoo, we build a beautiful little habitat for a beautiful little animal, the striped skunk. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, my friends, all across the happy little globe today, and welcome back to Wildwood Zoo. Do you guys like that logo? I really like that logo. My good buddy Forge made it. Really beautiful logo. Uh, anyways, we are getting started over here, not with the habitat itself, but a little seating area. So when I planned Wildwood Zoo, I planned everything out to like the last little bench in here. And I really wanted to make sure we had a section like this kind of near the start because usually when you have a zoo like this, um, I'm thinking of like Southwick's and Maine Wildlife Park is main inspiration. Get it, Maine? Um, usually you have a lot of seating areas near the entrance of the zoo, whether it be for, you know, school groups, whether it be for families just trying to get a little rest from the kids kind of running around. Either way, it's something I really wanted to include over here, and you guys can see I'm pulling in a lot of different building techniques. I'm using those new stones as a formation of the base down there. It looks really beautiful. And I also give us this nice, beautiful orange kind of look for the picnic benches. It's just a really awesome color that I think goes super well with the palette. Uh, moving on throughout here, I'm also looking for ways that we can integrate some other colors into the palette. And some of these that we do are using the other Twilight Shingles that we got in the Twilight Pack. Really beautiful pieces over there. So we kind of duplicate those on themselves along with those Arbor Beams. And we create this nice little template for us. And then what I do, I essentially just flip it over to the other side. Make sure it's all even and stuff like that. And then we can get started on the rest. Another thing I do over here is make sure that the bottom of the Shingles look good. Now, this is my main complaint about these pieces in the game. Uh, the Twilight Shingles, while they are extremely beautiful, and while they are some of like the best root pieces we've ever gotten in the game, uh, they don't have a bottom texture, which I think is kind of weird. Uh, I would have loved to have had that so I don't need to double up on like, you know, roof pieces, but, you know, it's totally fine, we work with it in the end, maybe someone has a practical use of that, but still, making these little, um, what do you call these, little buttresses, those are clearly aren't buttresses, but it's the first word that came to my mind. Um, little stone supports down there just help this whole building feel a little bit more solid. Um, and yeah, it's just something I really wanted to do, something I'm super proud of. Uh, I also kind of blend it in with the rest of the surrounding terrain. Now one thing you'll notice in this speed build, we don't actually edit like kind of that grassy area over to the left currently. That's because we actually keep that open for a particularly, you know, slippery animal. Yeah, I'm building for otters over there, so get excited for that. I'm very excited for that habitat. I have a really fun idea kind of like in mind for it. And you can see we're also using that same foliage palette as before. I'm getting a lot more comfortable with this palette. I think we chose a really good one to start off with. And if we ever add any more plants in here, be it like the red poppies, um, we could always go throughout the rest of the zoo and add them in. It's not like we got too far already. So making our way throughout here and using those um, what, what salt wart bushes. Oh my gosh, listen, I may not like the conservation pack all too much, but the salt wart bushes really help make up for it. I also add a whole bunch of um, leaves, all those fallen leaves, just to help fill out the area a little bit more. My only complaint, and this is like, this is just like a whole planet zoo thing. I wish we could have trees that don't really have like, you know, leaves around like the first like 10, 20 feet. And instead at the top, they only have leaves. I feel like that would be like 10 times better. It would look 10 times better and it would feel 10 times better. But unfortunately, we don't really have that kind of stuff in the game. Uh, I'm also trying to use those yew trees. Those are super awesome right over there. What I'm also doing throughout here is getting started on the actual skunk habitat. I know, very crazy. Four minutes in and we finally get to building for, you know, the actual animal habitat. It's not a leaf build. It's not a leaf video if we don't do that. So you can see I really want to make this indoor habitat functional. And that's why I'm kind of doing this little slanted area over here. And it doesn't really work out too well later down the line. But I do kind of take those, like, fixes into account. Now, unfortunately, the guests aren't really able to look inside of that glass. It's not see-through. Uh, I'm not really sure why. I don't know why Frontier made that decision. But normally when I see glass, it is see-through. So, like, you know, I don't really know. Uh, what I also do throughout here is also kind of flatten down that area. And we get started on some other areas. I do apologize. 
Um, I didn't expect this to, you know, not have the default transitions, but maybe you guys like it kind of like that. Maybe you guys like it kind of like snappy. Uh, I'm also adding some pumpkin enrichment, not enrichment, it'd be really good if we got pumpkin enrichment, but I'm also adding some pumpkins all throughout the zoo, uh, just to help it feel a little bit more like it's spooky, like it's nocturnal, etc, etc. I'm also adding the skunk log, um, I really wanted to make a little log, um, burrow over here for our skunks. I'm not sure if it's functional, it says it is, but the skunks, I have never seen them actually use it, so I really hope they do eventually. And really, it was just me trying to find the correct tree for this, but I think I settled on the Scott's Pine. You know, the one that kind of like leans over to the left a little bit? Yeah, that one right there. I think it has such a super awesome effect in the end, and it just looks so, so freaking beautiful. And you can see the skunks going right over there to sniff it up. Uh, so yeah, that's essentially what we have going on right there. I'm just trying to, you know, alter it, make sure that they're able to go in. And then I actually get started on some fences as well. Now normally, well originally, I wanted to have this be kind of like not organic. I wanted it to be, have like nice clear curves, nice straight lines, and that was it. But I kind of figured, let's play, with, let's play around with this a little bit. Let's kind of see what we could do. So what I'm doing over here is kind of creating this nice smooth transition of the glass. And I have to give a huge shout out to Mr. Just Goron for like this little technique that you kind of see. Uh, you can see that those posts don't actually have posts. Their posts are null. And that's because um, Goron found out this really, really super awesome trick that essentially if you place a null post just like a post not even a fence and you drag a kind of like established post over it uh it'll actually make the established post null and it just helps you build a lot better it just looks a lot cleaner uh now while we do cover that kind of stuff up um it's super useful for a whole bunch of different practicalities and i really suggest you guys start to play around with that because it's such a super awesome technique what I'm also doing over here is just making that back area over there all stone. I really didn't want any guest areas back there. I really wanted to keep them over here, like, consolidated to this area. So that's kind of what I do in the end. Making our way throughout here, I also start to add a whole bunch of stuff from our raccoon exhibit. Especially these rocks. I really want to have these areas feel nice and rocky in there. And I think it really helps pay it off so well. It just feels a lot more realistic with those tiny little pebbles. Also doing a little bit of decoration on the interior. I'm using a whole bunch of different things in there. Uh, I think you don't actually see it fully completed in this episode. I think I worked more on it after I recorded the cinematics. Just because I was bored, you know? And I was like, hmm, what small things can I add? And those small things kind of end up being big things. But we'll see that later down the line. Maybe if we do like a halfway tour. Like we kind of always do. But we can see that later down the line. Also adding all of our lovely little foliage from our foliage palettes in here. Super awesome with how well this came out. I was super happy and super thrilled to see like just how beautifully this foliage works together. Feels so nice, so dark, yada yada. Really do like that. And what I also do over there is make little tiny um, planters in those areas where the path kind of gets a little wonky. You'll see those in a little bit, maybe in the cinematics. Maybe I actually do it on camera, who really knows. Uh, but what I also do over here is kind of work with the branches a little bit to help this area feel like it's a little bit more hobbled together. Uh, that's something I really want to do throughout this entire zoo is have it feel a lot more realistic. And when things are realistic, sometimes they can be a little messy. Uh, a lot of the times if you go to like these smaller zoos and stuff like that, you can see the planters right there. I'm super happy with that. I used Freebuild to make those, so I essentially took a very small path, hold Control shift over the existing path, and it essentially allowed me a place to, like freestanding planters and stuff, so I thought that was super cool. Also planting a few other things throughout here. And what I also wanted to do was make a little awning. Uh, and you can see we have an exhibit over there. We'll get to work on that in just a little bit. But I did want to have this awning over here just to make sure that we are able to shade over the guests. Because when you do have areas like this that are um, indoor viewings, uh, you don't want the glare from the sun on the glass. That's something that's very important in zoo design that I feel like a lot of zoos that are around me don't really stick to. I'm um, looking at you, Stone Zoo. But making our way throughout here and just making sure that, you know, we bring in these kind of concepts and ideas that we've been working with, albeit with, um, 
you know, those little stone bases and stuff like that. Not a big fan of those fences. I know I will change those out later, but I just want to throw some fences over there just for the time being. That will link to backstage areas. Uh, and I'm also adding some salt wart and uh, other bushes right behind there to help really centralize the area a little bit more, help it feel a little bit more complete. And you can see we are working with the exhibit over here. So I'm adding American bullfrogs. Not really sure why. Um, I just felt like they'd be a fun inclusion right over here. Uh, I have some other plans for exhibit animals all throughout the zoo once we actually do get moving. Uh, but I'm super happy with this exhibit because it was super awesome. I've never really like really tried to make an exhibit box so interesting before but i think i was able to do it it was just a super fun process and it was a very fun very modular um so all the pieces kind of work together oh no i'm just super happy with it. it was super fun i'm gonna take a sip of my coffee right now wow riveting content um but making our way throughout here you can see i am both selecting the wood beams as well as the actual one meter stained wood panel and that way I'm easily able to kind of select stuff um, as a way to kind of you know duplicate it on its side and make sure it's even on all sides really awesome building technique over there I really got to go through like a building technique video soon for you guys because I have a lot of tricks that I've kind of picked up over like you know the past while um, and I really want to share them with you guys. I feel like you guys can pick up a lot from that. Uh, so essentially doing all the small details and then we actually do work on the roof. Nothing really too crazy for the roof. I just wanted to be nice and simple. Uh, so you can see me start to use these pieces right over here and I do, what do I do over there? Uh, oh yeah, I use this piece, kind of like that diamond shape. Uh, really happy with that one. I don't know. It just looks super funky. And then I was lazy and I didn't like when I was placing those um, Kind of like the frames on those roof pieces. I didn't realize how annoying it would be So I essentially just copied it over from another build uh, And it works pretty well. So I'm super happy with that and I just duplicate it on its side and it works It works pretty well. You know, I'm not really complaining all too much The only bad side like you can't see from the guest perspective So it really doesn't bother me all too much. So I'm super happy with that But essentially as we make our way through um, I was expecting it to change over to like the next portion of the speed build, but I guess not uh, I also add a frog over there uh, just so that you know, it's a frog exhibit. So if you don't like frog, you don't need to go to that exhibit. Also, I was playing around with like the skunk sign <laughs> and I really wanted to have like a guest education thing over here. And I was figuring out that, you know, the smoke enrichment doesn't really get a lot of use. Enrichment, the effect. Uh, so I figured we would have like a little like education station on some like skunk spraying and I thought that was super cute right over there so we have this right in the middle of the area probably not the place where you would want it because like that's where all the guests kind of go throughout <laughs> but I don't know I thought it was super fun um, also using this piece over here just to make sure that we're able to have this be interactable again like just go on getting all the shout outs in this series just go on actually figured this little thing out with um I think he might have put it in his independent zoo, uh, but that's really about it. I hope you guys enjoyed the little bit of cinematics because I have not edited them out yet, uh, but <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to drop a little like, let me know your favorite part of this little uh, exhibit, um, and yeah, I'll tell you what, you guys can name the albino skunk as well. Uh, I believe we're settling on Marshmallow for the name of the albino raccoon, so I'm very excited about that. But thank you guys so much for stopping by. You guys are always the best. I hope you guys have the most wonderful of wonderful days. And I can't wait to see you all in the next episode of Wildwood Zoo. Take care and have the most wonderful of wonderful days. Bye-bye now.